Across Britain, there's a hidden network of canals, over 2,000 miles long. Many of them cut through the most spectacular scenery in the country. In this series, I've chosen six of my favourites, from the Lancashire coast to the southwest of England. Oops. Oh dear, it's in. We've lost the hat. I'll be enjoying their stories, discovering why and how they were built. This is Britain at its absolute best. And celebrating their remarkable revival. I'm setting off along the Lancaster Canal. It's a beautiful trip, passing through lots of open countryside. I'll be making my way from Tewitt Field, through Lancaster, on to Glasson Port, and finally to Preston. On the way, I'll be showing off my skill with herrings. That's yours. Well, mine looks a bit more sort of homely, doesn't it? There's one word you could use, yeah. <laughs> Sorting the curd from the way. This is much harder than I thought it would be. And putting a top football team through their paces. I'll be showing how, against all the odds, this plucky little canal managed to survive. I'm in Lancashire on the Lancaster Canal to tell the story of one of the greatest transport battles of the centuries. The railways took on the canals and eventually they won. Then along came the motorways and in some places, like here, they delivered a knockout blow. That's the M6 smashing its way through the northern section of the Lancaster Canal. It's motorway madness. Thomas Rankin not only likes this canal, he's decided to live on it. What was your job? What were you doing? I worked at a nuclear power station. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> so you've gone from nuclear power to, to diesel power. <laughs> to diesel power yeah. and the slowest form yeah, of transport. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's the M6. People roaring past there. Whereas we're on the better mode of transport. <laughs> They're not smashing up the canal. That's what I like to see. This canal was built to carry coal, the black gold, up from Lancashire, and down came white limestone from Kendal. It's nicknamed the Black and White Canal. Now it's more fun. Hello. Now, what's your name? Nelly. You're all wearing safety harness, and what's the point of that? If you're wondering why we're wet, we um, like wet the first part of the canal, and then we like dived in. Was it exciting? Yes. 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 And you're ready for action. One, two, three. <laughs> OK, now, well done. Congratulations. You've passed the test. That's excellent. I need to get on, but the headmistress has to lead from the front. <laughs> Bye. It's not only children who are enjoying the water sports. What's the cow doing in the canal? People we meet on the canal, other boat owners are excellent. And Lancashire folk, they're the best, aren't they? Yes, well, we think so. They must be celebrities. It is! Hello! Oh, that's nice. These days, the railway here is kept in its place. How often do you see the trains? On here, every blue moon. But when the railway opened in 1840, the directors of the canal company knew they had a fight on their hands. Samuel Gregson led the campaign to save the canal boats, along with his eloquent son. For safety, economy and comfort, no other mode of conveyance could be so eligible as the boats. For there, the timid might be at ease and the most delicate mind without fear. They are fast, much more comfortable than a horse or coach, and there are no highwaymen. Then the canal company packed their boats by reducing their prices and ran fast fly boats, which whisked passengers from Kendal to Preston in just eight hours. The railway couldn't keep up and lost custom. The canal company then bought them out. And that, of course, was the big struggle with this canal when the railway and the canal were fighting and the canal company took over the railway. That was, that was the great reverse. That's what made this such an interesting area. To seeing the, the railway there, it's just rather 
Well, it rather catches you, doesn't it? You think it's rather poignant. These are the outskirts of Carnforth? Yep. Of course, it's famous for its station, its railway station, isn't it? It is, yes. What is that? Brief Encounter. I can't think of the name of the actor and the actresses now. Well, it's Trevor Howard and Celia Johnson. Right. What I liked about it was it was a small station and the trains are going in and out and you've got the clock and everything. I, I just It's just one of those films that stick in my mind. I really care for that film and I care for the way that Celia Johnson <laughs> spoke in that old-fashioned way. I wish you were dead. No, I don't mean that. That was silly and unkind. We're neither of us free to love each other. There's so much in the way. There's still time if we control ourselves and behave like sensible human beings. After Carnforth, the canal crosses the River Loon on its way to Lancaster. But here, on the aqueduct, it sprung a leak. Graham Ramsden and his team are busy repairing it. The canal's closed, John. You can't just close the canal, can you? Why? The canal sprung a leak. There was a vortex of water and water started piling out. So we've had to put these temporary dams in. It sounds like a bath running out. <laughs> There's a sort of plug yeah. hole. Yeah, very There's... similar, actually, but a very large plug hole. It's the first time I've been, <laughs> I've been in the bottom of a canal. It's good, isn't it? It is, isn't it? It's a very yeah. rare experience. This won't yeah. happen very often. And that, of course, is one of the, the great aqueducts it is. of the it's whole the, system. It's the Loon Aqueduct. So for the people coming here, yeah. trying to come here, yep. they'll be so disappointed they can't go across the aqueduct. People come on holiday just to visit this aqueduct. The aqueduct was an early work of the great engineer John Rennie, and it's a masterpiece. For Hayley Garrard, it's a joy to help restore it. So, Hayley, what's been your job here? I'm a heritage trainee. I've yeah. worked with the Canal River Trust for nearly a year. It's not often that something this size occurs. When it does, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a worry when you've got a lot of the canal water going into, into the moon and then... Because it could all have just drained out. And yeah, it could have done. That. We haven't got any locks. I think what will surprise people is they'll think, well, you know, if it was a modern thing, if it was a motorway accident, yeah. you'd leap into action. But what's nice is here we are with a 200-year-old structure and you're taking it so seriously. Yeah, well, you've got to. It's, it's something that local people are proud of, we're proud of, and it's important to, to keep it alive. Um, the canal itself and the aqueduct, because the people, when they built it, they were proud, so it should carry on, it really should. It was Rennie's first major major thing, and maybe it's the start of his portfolio. It was a bit yeah. of a um, nearly twice over budget, but hey, it was, it was worth it. Built to impress. I built to impress, yeah. yeah. I'm now heading south, making my way to Glasson Dock. I'm picking up a new boat in Lancaster with boatman Paul Edelston. It's such a lovely place, Lancaster. I didn't know it before, but you know, I must say, it's very attractive. It's like an undiscovered gem. It's really nice. It's beautiful. Morning. Morning, Paul. How are you? Morning. Are you having a good time? Super. Very. Yeah, good. Hotel boats. What does it mean, a hotel boat? Well, it's a, it's a boat that's a hotel. It's like checking into a hotel. You live on it for the duration that you're there. Bed, breakfast, evening meal. Yeah, well, they, they were certainly enjoying themselves, weren't they? Are you volunteers? Yes, all volunteers. Oh, right. What are you doing today? Painting these railings. Would you prefer to be paid? No. Well, it's a great job. Very, very impressive. Hooray for the volunteers. Well done. The canal passes through what looks like a valley, but it's all man-made. Well, it's called deep cutting because if you can look at top of the hill here, that was the original level of the landscape, so they had yeah. to dig it down and down and down to get the same level of the canal. And how so long it's all it... done by hand. All done by hand? All done by hand, pick and shovel, horse and cart. And it must have taken ages. I mean, must oh, have... ten years we took of it. Yeah. The importance of the canal was boosted in 1820, when a new branch was cut to the coast. Glass and dock allowed ships to have direct access to the canal. Within ten years, the dock was packed. 
over 16,000 tonnes, pass through here onto the canal. Coal, slate, timber, grain, potatoes and fish. The canal was a triumph. Now it makes a nice quiet mooring for the night. It's funny how things look different in the dark. Sleep tight, my babies. feeding the ducks. Not interested. Just nothing. Still, we've got the uh, a gas isolation valve. That's good. Well, what will the day bring? What adventures? It's going to be good. I'm at Glasson Dock, halfway along the Lancaster Canal. If there's one thing I really like for breakfast, it's kippers. Glass and Dock is famous for them, and Michael Price is the man to meet. And he's going to show me how to turn a herring into a kipper. You're going to be gutting the fish, you're going to learn how to split them, you're going to learn how to cure them and smoke them. I'll tell you what, I've never done this for a long time. Dress a man. <laughs> no, a bit of practice, you'll be all right. <laughs> Tip top. Yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? We'll make a trawlerman of you. OK, right. Where the fish? <laughs> Down here. Should we do the herring first? What about those things? No, well, that's that's bars of silver. That's creme de la creme. I can't let you touch that until you learn how to do the herring. Oh, right. Okay. They're the wild salmon off the river here. That's We're only out to fish from the 1st of June to the end of August, Monday to Friday for these. And there's several hundred pounds just in one fish there. How big is the fish? I mean, if I... That's about just short of 10 kilos, about 22, 23 pounds. Oh. If you're picking up there, put... now go and lift it off. Right. Oh. Size that bugger. God. That's amazing. He's a big fish. <laughs> I can't, it's nearly I can't as big hold. as you. <laughs> OK, well, look, so there's a herring, and we're going to turn it into a kipper. Yeah, firstly, this is called splitting the herring, you know? Yeah. So you go in the back of its head, on top of its backbone, knife in, just pull down, turn it around, split. Oh, that's great. It's herring. starting to look like a kipper there. It is. It? Right, have a go. OK, have a go. Right, here we go. Right. Remember, keep, you, keep yeah. your thumb and things out of the way. That's it. That's it now, I'll just put it all down. Is that it? It's nearly it. Turn, turn, <laughs> turn it around. <laughs> Split the head. All right. Point onto your chopping board. So you go in. Yeah. Like so. And then just like a guillotine. Yeah, like a guillotine, right? Okay. In. And then can't move it. Go. Stop. That's it. Yeah. Well, it's not as That's good. yours. Yeah, and let's see yours. Well, mine looks a bit more sort of homely, doesn't it? <laughs> you think, oh, there's someone who really it's, cares about fish. There's one word you could fish. use, yeah. <laughs> How many would, would a, someone do in a shift? Well, in, in about an hour, an hour and a half, we'll do about 1,000, 1,200 fish. God. So we've done the kippering, but yep. we now need to do the smoking. Yep. Got it. Like I say, it gets a bit smoky. <laughs> These are the ones that we did yesterday. <laughs> you just come lower down. I can't see. Come down. <laughs> Come out, the smoke will rise. Well, okay. So we crouch down. There we go. All right, okay. Now you look at all those kippers. I can't see it. <laughs> my, my eyes are crying. Okay. Okay, where are the they? Th the thing to look for, John, you're looking for a nice plump fish there on the loin of the fish. Yeah. And you're looking for oils. Okay. And that's what that's full of omega 3. That's what's really good for you. Can I choose that one then? Of course you can. Right, okay. Yeah. What do we do? Take it so off. So basically, we take, the, we take the kippers off, take the rod off. Take the whole lot off. You've right? chose the most awkward one because it's in the middle of the rod. <laughs> so if I take these off, right. So that's the one. That's I'm the one. That's in. one you want. You just pull that off that rod. All right. Okay. So pull it this so pull way. Pull all the way. Okay. Right. There right, you that's go. My, uh, but can I have two kippers? You can. You want right. another one in the middle? No, I think I'll just have one of those because <laughs> that's <laughs> easier. Now then, John. There you that's go. That's good. Kippers for breakfast. Great. Enjoy. Mmm. Mmm, terrific. 
really. These cuppers, mm, you just know if you're made for cuppers. And I am. The real kipper fanatic eats the skin, eats everything. I'll tell you what, John, I didn't realise there's that much flesh on a kipper. <laughs> uh, you oh, devoured it. I'm only allowed to have kippers at home when my wife's away. I mean, that's... she just doesn't like the smell. What have you been up to? Good for um... you. <coughs> <coughs> <They're> terrific. <laughs> I'm off back to the main branch of the canal and going south to Garstang. Hello. Hi. Hey, how are you? How are you? How are you enjoying Lancaster Canal? Yes, terrific. What do you think? Beautiful. Lovely. Garstang is famous for its cheese, Garstang Blue, as well as creamy and crumbly Lancashire. This has been a cheese-making region for hundreds of years. It was here at Garstang that the original Lancashire cheese was created. Cheese here is still made in the traditional way, but in a factory which is completely modern. It's all rather high tech. I've been sent off to clean up and put on all the gear. There are lots of instructions. Even the taps are complicated. I never thought traditional cheese making could put me in such a tiz. I feel like I'm off to the moon. Where am I? Oh dear, and they're waiting for me. Graham Slater is going to help me get a grip. Hello, Graham. Good morning, John. So tell me what we're going to do. I'm just going to pull this curd back so then the whey can run off. Right. It just helps the cheese dry out a little bit more. I can't lean over as far as you do. No, you have to roll your sleeves up. So this is the curd, yeah, that's, that's the way, way, right? So I've got to make sure that the curd is pulled Yeah, it just, just helps the, um, the way off. All right, OK. Oh, right. It's hard, isn't it? This is much harder than I thought it would be. Yeah. Well, this is handmade cheese, isn't it? This is, yeah, this is, this is crumbly Lancashire. Yeah, it smells test, good. Test a bit if you want. Really? Mm. It doesn't really taste of cheese yet, does it? But now, in most cheese factories, the, the big ones, yeah. do they do this by hand? And they're um, really big factories? The big cheddar, cheddar companies, they have what they call cheddar towers. Yeah. That's not done by hand, that's just milk goes in and a block of cheese comes out. But well, this is traditional hand cheese making. Yeah, we are traditional hand yeah. cheese makers, aren't we? Yeah. But crumbly Lancashire has to be bound by Brian Rigg. That yeah. doesn't look like crumbling, that looks oh, pretty crumb. solid. Yeah, it is solid. That's about five days old, that one. And what's the point of this binding? Well, that keeps it together. You want to put the binder put on as quick as you can. OK, now that's going to be at the bottom, that's going to be at the top. You've given me something harder than <laughs> that you've just done there, I mean... Well, you know, I've had to do it, so... All right, you know, but this it's is... It's only I, a bit of fun. Oh, oh right. It, yeah, so... It's fun. <laughs> Right, what we do don't want think? to do much of that, do we? OK, all right, now I turn it over. Yeah. All okay, right, ready? OK. <laughs> hey, look at that. That is pretty good. <laughs> it is. It I'm looks, very impressed with that. It looks so. like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, there. No, it doesn't yeah, matter yeah. about that. So, will you give me the job if I've done all right? Yes, you've got the job. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> For a while, the Lancaster Canal was able to keep the railways at bay. But by the 1960s, it had fallen out of use. The motorway was king. But speed isn't everything. I think it can be overrated. Nearing Preston, the canal passes right next to a ladies' football club, the Lancashire League Cup champions, the Penwortham ladies. A chance for me to help out. First, my pre-match warm-up. John, John, come on, we're ready for you. Oh, I'm not, I'm not quite ready. Come on, all the girls are waiting. Oh, uh, no, I'll, I'll be soon, soon, soon we'll be with you. Now I'm ready. I'm bottled up energy, ready to explode. Emily, yeah? where do you want me to uh, be in position? There. The, what, in the goal? No, behind the goal. Oh, behind the goal. This is harder than being on the pitch. I'm shadowing her every move. 
before I begin on any fancy footwork. That's diving taken care of. Well, they seem to be getting the hang of it. Well, done. well look, thanks very much, team. That was really... I really enjoyed that. A bit frightening, though. <laughs> what do you like about it? Everything, really. The social side of it, the fitness. I mean, I think, like, women's football is definitely on the up, which is really enjoyable. You get a lot more youngsters coming in and getting involved. Yeah, it yeah. seems silly that it didn't happen years ago, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's definitely been around, like, years ago, but I think it's just getting the exposure, especially from the recent World Cup. But do you still get people making jokes and saying, oh, you know... Yeah, yeah uh, definitely. Uh, really? Yeah. yeah. What are they... can't play football. <laughs> yeah. do, you, do, they really, do they really say that? Yeah, yeah. they do. Now, what happens when you're playing with boys and you're a lot better than them? I bet that happens a lot. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, I usually run home crying. <laughs> <laughs> And what, what's your work do? What sort of work do you do? Um, I work for Marks and Spencers. Oh, do you? <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK, what are you working? Yeah. I work in sport here. Right, OK, what are you working? Um, I'm in the police. Oh, are you? Yeah. Right. I could have been arrested <laughs> for... Well, I, I'm not sure what Crimes I've done wrong. against football. <laughs> <laughs> OK, thanks, team. Thank you. Bye. 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 I'm on the last leg of my trip down the Lancaster Canal. The railways and then the roads took over from the canal, but that isn't the end of the story. In 2002, the Ribble Link was opened, connecting this canal to the River Ribble. It's the first completely new section of canal to be built in Britain in nearly 100 years. I've reached my final destination, towards the end of the canal, where you can now link up with the rest of the canal network. This section has recently been built, and isn't that marvellous? After years of struggling with competition from the railways and the roads, it's the canal which has been given a new lease of life. And the winner is the Lancaster Canal. Well, we're back in Coronation Street next, where Jason and Gemma are getting cosy in Weatherfield. Then tonight at nine, continuing our brand new drama and based on a shocking true story, James Nesbitt stars in The Secret. Mm -hmm.